So over the past two weeks, I've been analyzing audio from the assassination attempt, and I've got some interesting findings to share with you. In addition to the high-quality audio recorded here at the podium, I used three phone videos recorded by people over here, close to where the shooter was. This is the video where you can hear the lady screaming Ross several times. And this is the one where you hear the man saying, he's got a gun. And this one was recorded by DJ Stewart. I used a method called time difference of arrival to determine where each of the 10 shots came from. We were told that eight shots were fired by the shooter on the roof and that two shots from counter snipers took out the shooter. By synchronizing the audio from these four different sound sources, and analyzing the time differences of the shots being fired, I was able to confirm the eight shots from the rooftop and identify the location of the two counter sniper shots. Up to this point, we've been thinking that the shots came from the south barn, but they did not. In order to do time difference of arrival, I knew I would need precise timestamps for the gunshots. So I carefully analyzed the podium audio. Take a look at what happened. <laughs> Let's zoom in and slow it down to one quarter speed. For each shot, there is a snick, followed by a report that echoes. Since bullets travel faster than the speed of sound, the supersonic shockwave hits Trump's microphone before we hear the sound of the gun being fired. Here's a photo of a rifle bullet in flight, showing the shockwave that it puts out. The rifle bullets were close enough to Trump's microphone for it to pick up the sound of the shockwave. And that's what makes the snick sound. After each snick, we hear a report. The report comes 221 milliseconds after the snick. Given the velocity of the rifle bullet, that time difference corresponds to about 140 yards, matching the distance from Trump to the shooter. I carefully marked each snick and each report and recorded the timestamps. And there was the counter sniper shot that stopped the threat. The second counter sniper shot came 10 seconds later. I then did the same thing for the Ross video. And for the second phone video, He's on top of the roof. Don't go over there. And the third phone video. Okay. 
I put all the gunshot timestamps into Excel so I could do a quick check to make sure that all the reports lined up fairly well in time across the four videos. I had to estimate the times for reports 6 and 7 on the podium mic because the shots were so close together that the snicks masked those two reports. As expected, the delta values for the first eight shots are all close to zero, and the deltas for the two counter sniper shots are larger because those shots were from a different location. I'm no expert on TDOA, so I had to look up the formulas and figure out how to do it. Basically, when you know the locations of the two recording devices and the time difference for when the sound hits them, you can solve this equation for Y and make a plot that looks something like this. By plotting the curves from two or three different pairs of audio recorders, you can see where the curves intersect, and that shows you where the sound source is located. I wrote a program in MATLAB to draw the TDOA curves for me. I used Google Maps to get the coordinates of everything, and here's the data from the Excel spreadsheet. I used the known location of the shooter to synchronize the times of the four sound recorders to the first shot. Here I'm calculating TDOA curves for all the different pairs of audio sources. After viewing all the plots, I picked out the three pairs that seem to work the best, and I'll run the program now so that you can see the TDOA plot for each of the 10 shots. I'll scroll through the first eight shots a couple of times so that you can see that they are all similar. The place where all three lines cross shows the location of the gunshot. It's normal for the TDA technique to return two answers. However, this ambiguity is easily solved by knowing which of the two recorders heard the sound first. In this case, that would correspond to the point here on the right. For the two counter sniper shots, I expected these to come from the south barn, but they obviously did not. They came from this location here, north of the podium. I'll pinpoint that location for you on the map soon. But first, I wrote a different MATLAB program to actually calculate the precise location of each gunshot. It uses MATLAB's VPA solve function to find the values using the TDOA equations here. Let me run this for you. So the two counter sniper shots are here, and the first eight shots up here. Let's take a look at those on Google Earth now. Shot 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Obviously, there is a fair amount of error in this technique. The spread here is about 23 yards, but that's the best I was able to do with the data that I had. 